Hello, everyone. This is Sean from the Soccer Nostalgia blog. I have the pleasure to interview Mr. Davide Esquilun de Rota. Mr. Rota is an Italian former freelance journalist from Biella in Italy, who currently lives in Odense in Denmark since 2013, working as a languages teacher. Mr. Rota has appeared before on a podcast discussing the matches of the Denmark national team and also participated in written interviews about the matches of the Italian national team under Vittorio Pozzo. With France and Denmark paired together in the World Cup, we take the opportunity to look at the match history between the nations. This interview is separate from a podcast series. This video interview is, will serve as a companion piece to a written blog presentation on the head-to-head -head encounters between Denmark and France. Hello, Davide. Always a pleasure. Hello, Sean. Uh, pleasure for me too, as well. Thank you. So let's get to the origin of these matches. The first matches between the nations were during the 1908 Olympics in London. In fact, for Denmark, these were the very first international matches in their history. Denmark faced both the France B team and the main national team in the space of three days. The first match between Denmark and the France B side was on October 19th and Denmark won 9-0. Three days later, on October 22nd, Denmark inflicted an even heavier defeat to the main French side, 17-1. to This was France's record-heavy defeat. And on that day, Denmark's Sofus Nilsson scored 10 of the goals, which was a record that stood for nearly a century. What is significant about these two matches besides the historical aspect? Uh, I have to say these two matches were uh, played uh, in the Olympic Games in London in a very strange situation where France fielded not uh, really the best players at that time. Uh, France uh, had uh, too many players. They were students in London. And um, so they decided to field in the Olympic Games uh, two different teams. But I'm not sure they were the best players in the in the country. So uh, we have to say the, the Denmark success uh, was uh, very, very large in both games. But uh, one has to consider uh, the difference of the, the quality and the other organization of the two different uh, teams. Denmark uh, has only one team with the best players in Copenhagen. They started to play football many years before the Frenchmen. And uh, they were very, very... Um, Pre um, prepared for the for the war, for the Olympic Games, the the, the French team was not so uh, strong as uh, one can consider now. If you if you if you get uh, com if you compare the French uh, side to the to the modern football, that was very very different, very am amateur, and uh, so the seventy one the seventeen one is uh, has to be read in a in a in a particular way. Sofus Nielsen scored the 10 goals in that game and uh, is still the, the national record for Danish national team. Sofus Nielsen was uh, <clears throat> a very good scorer, but uh, he scored only 16 goals in the Danish national team, 10 in this game, and, uh, and only six uh, goals in, other, in another uh, 19 games. So um, it was a bit, bit particular, strange, unique. Sofus Nielsen in the normal life was a Carlsberg beer employee and uh, was interesting to say was one of the first Danish players uh, to play abroad. Uh, in fact, he played in the northern Germany in Kiel, uh, but only because his big brother was uh, there to work uh, as, a, as a company in Kiel, in the board, it, not far from the borders between Germany and Denmark. But anyway, 17-1. Is, uh, is one uh, result of uh, for, for Danish people. They have to be proud. And it, it never happened again after 1908. Yes. The sides did not face one another for more than six decades, a span that included two world wars. They faced off in two friendlies in the 1970s. On November 21st, 1973 at Paris, France defeated the Danes 3-0. This was France's first win over Denmark and the first match on French soil. 
on September 1, 1976, as Copenhagen decides to play to 1-1 tie. And this was the first tied match in the series. What is remembered from these matches? They were two friendly matches. Uh, and uh, what is strange, uh, for uh, more than um, 65 years, uh, Denmark and France, they were not uh, against each other. Um, but the, the connection between the two, the two countries uh, were um, there were there were many connections in, in between the two countries in culture, in in, in art, uh, and in cooperation. But uh, uh, only in seventy three uh, they they meet, uh, and uh, in at that uh, in in this year both uh, Denmark uh, or and France they were not qualified to the next World Cup in West Germany in seventy four. So it was uh, um, not a very first uh, niveau, first level. Um, friendly game but anyway France uh, has uh, better players uh, in this period because uh, Saint-Étienne was very good in the European Cup uh, players like uh, Georges Beretta Christian Saramagna uh, and the brothers uh, Hervé or Patrick uh, Revelli uh, were very very outstanding players and also Henri Michel from Nantes was a very good midfield uh, and he, later he was uh, fast in the national team, but later also was a coach of the national team, as we know. In Denmark, uh, the level was, was a bit lower. Uh, the coach was the Austrian, uh, Rudi Strittich, and he had uh, good results in, in, the, in two clubs in Denmark, in uh, Esbjerg and in uh, Aarhus, but uh, not very good in national team. They were still uh, amateur and uh, the best player in that uh, 11, they, they lost 3-0 in Paris, was uh, Henning Jensen from Borussia Mönchengladbach in Denmark, uh, has a big, uh, a good reputation as a very good, outstanding uh, attacking player. He played many years together with Alan Simonsen, uh, best uh, European player in 77. Another player in that Denmark 11, interesting to, to remark, was uh, a young Morten Olsen, at that time, uh, Morten Olsen was a midfielder and he played in a, in a small club in Bruxelles, uh, Molenbeek. But uh, anyway, uh, France won 3-0 uh, uh, with the goals of Beretta and uh, own goal uh, of um, uh, Søren Larsen and the third uh, goal of uh, Hervé Revelli. Uh, in the 76 uh, was a better game because uh, the France was a better team and uh, fielded the... Um, Almost uh, all the players that they later participated to the World Cup in 78, the attack trio, Rocheteau, Lacombe, six, was the same in Argentina. But, of course, the big star was the legendary Michel Platini. And in that game, Michel Platini saved the France from a defeat, scoring a fantastic free kick. Uh, Denmark was 1-0 uh, in, the, in the break because uh, the Danish libero, Per Röntved, from an assist in, in corner kick from uh, Jürgen Christensen, scored for Denmark. But, but as I said, Michel Platini, a few minutes uh, to the left, uh, saved the France from the defeat and scored with a super fantastic free kick. I invite you to, to watch in YouTube because the, there is a video of that game. Yes. And we should mention that Morsen Olsen played in both of these matches in the 1970s as well as in 1984 against France. He later managed Denmark in matches against France from like 2001 to 2015. And uh, you mentioned Platini scoring near the end for France. He would also score against Denmark in 1983 and 1984, as well as manage France against them in 1992. So now we come to the decade of the 80s. It was during this decade that both of these sides became powers at world football. So on September 7, 1983 at Copenhagen, Denmark defeated France 3-1 uh, with Michael Laudrup scoring two goals. This was Denmark's first win on home soil in the series. A few months later, on June 12, 1984, at Paris, uh, as the opening match of the 1984 Euros, uh, France won 1-0 with Michel Platini scoring a goal that was, it was a shot that was deflected off of Soren Busk's head. This was the first competitive match between the nations, uh, not including the Olympics in 1908. In terms of skill, 
Was this the best period of matches between the nations? Sure, <laughs> we we are we were in the time at the time of uh, Danish dynamite. So of course for Denmark was a very good period. The German uh, coach uh, by Polish origins, uh, Sepp Piontek, assembled by uh, with a, with a good work, uh, a fantastic uh, fantastic team. And uh, from the other side, there was uh, the big friends of Michel Hidalgo. They were uh, European champions in '84. In the same period, uh, France won also a gold medal in the Olympic Games uh, in Los Angeles. That game, uh, then from '83, was the, the real explosion of Mikel Laudrup with the two fantastic uh, goals. Uh, and uh, in that game, Mikel Laudrup showed his uh, best uh, dribbling tricks. And uh, <clears throat> The, the Danish uh, journalists were uh, impre impressed by Laudrup's uh, game. Uh, he was only 19 and he shocked the, the, not only the, the foreign uh, journalists, but also the Danish, because he has not showed so much in the Danish league. Uh, Mikael Laudrup was just uh, news as a, as a son of a, another good player, Finn Laudrup, in the, in the 60s. And as we know, the family grew up uh, with the oncoming uh, of uh, Brian Laudrup, uh, Brian Laudrup in the 80s. But uh, um, that game uh, was uh, like um, a, a good test for Denmark uh, in the way of uh, France uh, European Championship. In the European Championship, uh, Denmark has the honor to play the opening match with a lot of fans. They traveled in France, in Paris, with uh, any possible uh, way, uh, cars, uh, train, uh, and the fly. And in that game, Denmark was very, very um, <clears throat> not uh, unlucky. The, the, I think I saw the game, uh, all the game live, and I, I, I think uh, that, that was not a very, uh, really deserved that win for France. Not only because the goal of uh, Michel Platini was technically an, uh, an own goal, because uh, the head of Sir Busque, um, changed the trajectory, the trajectory of the uh, of the shooting of Michel Platini, but also because of France, uh, they played a very hard. I remember a criminal take of Manuel Amoro, and, uh, and then he had a red card, and uh, especially because of the um, injury of Alan Simonsen. After a few minutes, Alan Simonsen uh, couldn't play anymore in uh, in that tournament, so he was sent home. And uh, at that time, there was not possible. To, to change him with another player. So Denmark was, was very, very unlucky and the, the defeat, 1-0, one nil, one nil, is not very deserved. Yes. So the sides faced each other th more in the 90s. In fact, three times in mostly competitive matches. So on June 17, 1992, at Malmo in Sweden, during the 1992 Euros, Denmark defeated France 2-1 to advance and eliminate France from the group stage. In fact, this was the last match of Michel Platini as manager for France. And we all remember Henrik Larsson scoring early on and Lars Elstrup scoring with 12 minutes remaining. So the sides would face each other in a friendly on November 9, 1996 at Copenhagen. And Denmark won this match 1-0 with a goal by Per Pedersen. And at the time, this was France manager Aimé Jacques' first loss as a manager since taking over in 1994. The sides would meet again during the 1998 World Cup hosted by France. It was a group stage match in Lyon on June 24, 1998. France had already qualified to the next round, so they gave a run out to some of the reserve players and won this match 2-1. Uh, so in this decade, both sides won titles. The Danes won the Euro in 1992 and France won the World Cup in 1998. How do you regard these matches in this decade? I have a good feeling when I remember the games. I I have seen uh, all three games. The first one in '92, it was the game of the rebirth or the revenge for the Denmark uh, national team. Not only because it costed uh, to Michel Platini a place as a uh, as a coach in the French French uh, French national team, but also because it was the jump for Denmark to to win the the group and uh, run together uh, run. Uh, 
forward in the semi-final of the European uh, national uh, European Championship as a uh, as an underdog. They they were nobody uh, betting about Denmark because, as we know, they were not in the A teams uh, qualified. But it was there was a. Uh, as, in, as we say in France, uh, in French, repechage of uh, Denmark in the eight uh, in the in the place of Yugoslavia because Yugoslavia was in the um, civil war at that period. Denmark after after a very poor start against uh, Sweden uh, where they they lost uh, one nil and uh, nil nil against uh, England, they eliminated the Frenchmen with a very good goal of uh, the left back back Henrik Larsen. At that time, he was without a contract. The last team where he played was Pisa in Italy. And the second goal after the 1-1 by uh, Jean-Pierre Papin was scored by an, under, an, an under, underdog, uh, Lars Elstrup, who was, uh, was not in the starting 11 and he came in the, in the game uh, later. Heinrich Lars and uh, Lars Elstrup were uh, very, two, two very important names in the success in the 1992. Henrik Larsen was also a surprisingly top scorer with three goals, and he was a left back, as we know. Uh, in the 1996, uh, uh, both times we were on the way to the World Cup uh, 1998 in France. So it was uh, an important uh, test match for both sides. Like in the 82, uh, Denmark defeat the future world champion. In 82 was Italy, the only defeat in the uh, campaign. And uh, in 98 was France. Uh, the goal came from a throw-in by um, Thomas Helweg, uh, who was a player. He started in Odense and then he played many years in Italy with Udinese, Inter and Milan. And uh, after this uh, throw-in, uh, Per Pedersen uh, scored with an acrobatic uh, goal. So it was uh, very nice to see Denmark win, but it was a friendly game. Uh, with, uh, we have not to forget that. And uh, was is, is interesting for me. Both uh, they played for um, OB Odense, my team, uh, the team of the of the of the town where I live now. But of course, in 1998 it was another music. Uh, France won uh, because uh, there were before uh, a penalty by uh, Jean, um, by Djorka F. And then Denmark uh, scored with Mikel Laudrup as penalty uh, with penalty as well. And the um, the goal they scored from, from for France was by Emmanuel Petit. Men, but uh, both teams were uh, already qualified in the second round. In the second round, in the 80s, Denmark won uh, 4-1 against Nigeria, and then they lost in the quarterfinals uh, 2-3 against Brazil. Uh, Denmark uh, was not maybe stronger like the uh, Danish Dynamite, but uh, the Swedish coach, Bo Johansson, has a uh, very good uh, new uh, young player, not only the the Lauder uh, the Lauder brothers, but uh, of course the legendary goalkeeper uh, Peter Schmeichel, then uh, or or Martin Jorgensen from Fiorentina, it Italy, and another good players at that period was the st was a stick tufting uh, was a, a very rough midfield a defensive midfield, but anyway uh, Denmark. Uh, as a very good campaign in the World Cup 1998 was the best result ever. Quarterfinals 2-3 against Brazil. Yes. So now we come to a decade of the 2000s. The sides would meet four times in this decade. On June 11, 2000 at Bruges in Belgium, France defeated Denmark 3-0 in a Euro 2000 group phase match. And this was the third time the sides had met in the Euros. In the following year at Nantes, the sides met in a friendly on August 15, 2001. And France won this match uh, with a Robert Pires goal. The sides would meet each other again during the 2002 World Cup on June 11 at uh, Incheon in South Korea. Denmark defeated France 2-0 and eliminated the defending World Cup champions. Finally, uh, on May 31st, 2006 at Lens, France defeated Denmark 2-0 in a preparatory friendly ahead of the 2006 World Cup. So what do you remember from these decade's matches? Four matches, three friendly matches. I remember, of course, most than, uh, than game, uh, that game in 2002. 
In 2000, uh, no game. Uh, Blanc, Henri, Viltor, big names for France, uh, French football. France uh, was uh, at his best ever. Uh, after they were uh, world champions uh, in 1998, uh, European champions in 2000. So no problem for France. Uh, and it was uh, at the end of the short Boyo Hanson era in the Denmark, uh, in the Danish national team. The game of 2001 was a good start for Morten Olsen, the new coach, uh, as we mentioned before, as a, as a player. And uh, three very good players in the new generation. Uh, Dennis Romedal, uh, back uh, or uh, maybe um, right, right side. Jesper Grönkjer and uh, Jon Del Thomason, very good uh, attackers. But uh, also the that game was not uh, very good for Denmark. Uh, France won one nil and was a summer a summer game, not very interesting. The third one uh, in two thousand two in uh, in Korea was of course uh, uh, the revenge of France against Denmark, but. Uh, um, it was, sorry, but from Denmark against France, two uh, 0 but Denmark in that period has a bit a big problem. The problem was the goalkeeper. After the era of uh, Peter Schmeichel, the new goalkeeper Thomas Sørensen made uh, a lot of mistakes, especially in the next game after uh, France, Denmark uh, won against the France, and uh, it costed the defeat against England and uh, nil uh, nil three in the eight finals in the World Cup. So the end of that World Cup. The last one is also a friendly game, a 2 nil for France, but not uh, uh, very interesting because in the in the this in this preparatory game, Denmark was not qualified to the World Cup uh, 2006. It was uh, uh, was France, but not them. So the one in 2002 in Korea was the the most important, and uh, unfortunately for me because I support Denmark, as you know, Denmark lost to two nil and. Uh, uh, Denmark lost later against uh, England and has to, to to leave the World Cup. Yes. So now we come to the decade of 2010s. The size would meet three times. On two, on March 29, 2015, in a friendly at Saint-Étienne, France defeated Denmark 2-0. And we have to mention France were the 2016 Euro hosts and uh, were constrained to friendly matches for this period. A few months later, on October 11, 2015, at Copenhagen, France won 2-1 with a double strike from Olivier Giraud. He had also scored in the previous match in March. And... Significantly, this match in October 2015 was France's first ever win on Danish soil. Now, the sides would meet at Moscow during the 2018 World Cup in Russia on June 26, 2018. The match ended in a scoreless tie, and this was the third time the sides had met in a World Cup. Anything significant from these matches? The first one in 2015, as you said, was important because it was the first time uh, France won in Denmark in Parken because Denmark plays uh, almost all the games, uh, home home games in Parken. And the, for, the, the former name was Idrets Park and Parken from 1992 when he was uh, restructured. But uh, anyway, Denmark was uh, with uh, in a phase where they were changing uh, new players and um, after many years, Morten Olsen was uh, was leaving the national team. But uh, it's curious to watch. Uh, it's interesting to watch the the two lineups because many of the players are still now after seven years in the national team. In France, we are we have uh, Varane, Griezmann, or Giroud, and uh, Giroud scored the uh, scored the, the goal uh, together with Lacazette. But in Danish team, we have uh, now uh, still Kasper Schmeichel, uh, Simon, Simon Kerr, uh, Christian Eriksen, Delaney, Vass, uh, Andreas Christensen, and also Yusuf Paulsen. All are in the se- um, 26 uh, names uh, list in the next World Cup. In the game uh, in uh, Parken, uh, Giroud uh, scored uh, two two goals, uh, and uh, the Danish uh, goal was scored uh, by uh, Sviachenko, is a stopper, a central um, central defender. He plays uh, still in the FC Midtjylland, but no more in the national team. 
Also, we are the game. We are the game in the 2018 in Russia, where uh, the two teams uh, were not uh, very interesting to to force the game. It was a much tactical game. Only a couple of good saves uh, from Peter Schma- from Kasper Schmeichel to Fekir, but uh, was a very very boring uh, nil nil. Denmark uh, and France, they they were uh, forward in the World Cup, and Denmark was out against Croatia in the 80s. Uh, a very, very unlucky game. But anyway, uh, France vindicated Denmark in the final, winning uh, 4-2 in the last game of the competition. Uh, ahead of this match in 2018, wasn't there some controversy when... Uh... I believe the Denmark manager, the Norwegian Ag Hared, he had made some disparaging remarks ab- about the French players. Do you remember that? Yes, I, I remember. Also, uh, a lot of journalists say that they were uh, too much slow. Uh, there was like a gentleman agreement uh, to to draw nil nil in that game. I agree, but that's not fault of the players or the coaches because that's the rules. They are they are wrong. If it's possible, of course, I can understand uh, players that uh, they agree uh, um, a draw in the in the game if they have no interest to to risk uh, to risk to go out because they have to to play as they as they as they have. So uh, morally, is not a very good example. But uh, is uh, FIFA or UEFA has to change the rules and possibly uh, give a, a chance to to all the teams uh, to. To, to beat each other with a playoff system from the first round. So the sides faced one another twice in this last year uh, as part of the UEFA Nations League. On June 3rd, 2022 at Saint-Denis, Denmark defeated France 2-1 through a double strike by Andreas Cornelius. And Karim Benzema had given France the lead. This was Denmark's first ever win over France on French soil. A few months later, for the return fixture at Copenhagen on September 25th, 2002, less than two months ago, Denmark once again were victorious 2-0. Uh, what's your takeaway from these Nations League matches? There were uh, two surprises because uh, I guess uh, with the best team now, France is better than, than Denmark. But the first game in Saint Denis in uh, Paris uh, the, was deserved because the Frenchmen, after a very good uh, first leg, they played with arrogance. They were not uh, playing as a team. And after the break, uh, Andreas Cornelius uh, punished the punished the, the French team with two um, counterattack goals. So the first uh, or the uh, and the only win uh, Danish win in Dan- in France uh, soil in French soil was full uh, completely deserved. The second was also a surprise, but uh, we have to say France was uh, without uh, thirteen players and not available in that game. Um, Kasper Dolberg or Andreas Skowolsen, two very good uh, players in the new generation, scored the goals, and I remember a very good. Um, um, a good game uh, from uh, Kasper Schmeichel and uh, the rebirth uh, uh, Christian Eriksen, yeah, both in outstanding form. But as I said, uh, France was uh, with a very uh, poor uh, eleven, starting eleven with the third uh, goalkeeper. So um, the, the, I guess the first one, then in Paris, is most is more important than the second one win for Denmark. So. The sides are due to meet one another, in fact, next week on November 26th at the World Cup at Qatar. What kind of a match do you expect at the World Cup? A very different match from the last two, of course. But it depends on the results in the first game. Denmark uh, starts uh, Tuesday against Tunisia and uh, France uh, against Australia. If, as it's as it is possible, both they 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 meet each other with three points, I expect uh, uh, again a very well accepted draw. But it's possible also uh, one of the two teams will try to win that that time because uh, they understood the the group the 
was is not very impressive. But I uh, I guess they can meet again in the final. France and Denmark were uh, are two of my favorite teams for the fi- for the final. In that moment, they had the best players, probably Belgium, Germany, and maybe Brazil has the same the same level now. But I guess uh, uh, I I can guess Denmark against France will not the only one game in the next World Cup. Yes. So in closing, on balance, the sides appear to be equal with eight wins for each side in the 18 matches they played against one another. How do you regard the history between the sides? It's about uh, a bit uh, surprise, a surprise, because uh, France is a, is a big country. Denmark uh, is not a big country. And uh, probably Danish players uh, played with more motivation and uh, then uh, the French players in those games. And uh, Denmark is always on the wave of uh, Hans Christian Andersen's uh, fairy tales. They, they have a big support from the public, from the fans uh, in every game they play uh, all over the world. Probably France uh, sometimes has uh, some problems with uh, discussions between the players, uh, between the, the coach. The coach maybe sometimes is not so good. Is not the case of Didier Deschamps because I think he's one of the best coach as uh, France uh, ever had. But uh, yeah, the the statistics are very surprise a surprise for me because I don't expect Denmark is the same level as France. Statistics uh, has to be also uh, read. I, we are read sometimes Denmark won because France was not at the best, and uh, the famous seventy one uh, is uh, is uh, is a bit uh, folkloristic than uh, than real. Uh, so. Anyway, uh, in the in the World Cup finals and the European Cup finals, Denmark has uh, always had uh, a high profile. So respect for the little Denmark against the uh, big friends uh, in the official games. And uh, so I'm very happy to watch the the balance is very very uh, normal. Uh, so uh, the same uh, the same win both sides. Yes, and this will be the fir- this will be the fourth time the sides will meet at the World Cup. So with that, once again, I would like to thank you for this interview and to let everyone know to please read the main blog article as well for more detail. The link is included on the video upload description along with our respective contact information. In addition, on the following days, I will upload the compendiums with all the lineups and any available photos and videos from these matches. So, Davide, thank you again. And see you. You're welcome. Good luck at the World Cup for everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.